Okay, guys, welcome. So, yeah, we're here today, the Think Six conference, and we are present, going to present the Think Networks Madrid community. So, we're going to tell you what this is. First of all, let us present ourselves. So, I'm Mario. I work at the moment at Sweeper. It's a startup on work, working on providing customer service, co contextualized customer service for the connected home. And also, I'm a part for the the Think Network Madrid. It's called TTN Madrid Community here in Madrid, where we are trying to build a public-owned IoT network here in Madrid. And here is Angel. Yeah, I'm Angel Martinez. Hey, yeah. Nice to meet you. Uh, okay, I'm a TTN Madrid member, core team member, and also I have uh, owner of a com of a company startup. And actually, are mm, very very focused on the TTN project uh, here in in Spain. And we are talking about this project, what is about TTN network, and where's all that things involved on that community project, right? Great, so that, that's us, and this is the thing that works. So, to get you kick started, I'm gonna give you a quick deep, uh, not deep, but a quick dive about wireless technologies, and what are people using in IoT, and why this approach from the thing that works is a, a, an approach that we believe it's a valid one and, a, and, and the most appropriate one for the a community network. So, yeah, you know, the, it couldn't be an IoT event without uh, the typical hype slide here. So, yeah, you know, billions and trillions and zillions of connected devices and applications that smart cities, industrial <coughs> IoT, blah, blah, blah. So, basically, we have, we're going to have tons of devices either at home or in the city to get connected, and we have many options actually to, do, to achieve this. Here are the technologies that are actually enabling this, these scenarios, the wireless ones. Okay, so here, let me explain you a bit. We are just picturing here these technologies, comparing their bandwidth. By, by bandwidth, we mean how much data we can transmit. And here is the range, the coverage for this communication. So here, I, we are going to be classifying these technologies in several groups. This first group here, we are, in a, we are putting inside the Wi-Fi technologies and the 3G communications. So, as you can see here, from the, with, uh, looking at the range, the Wi-Fi is just on the left, so the range is short, kind of 30 meters, kind of stuff. Then we have the 3G, like it's a cellular communication, we have it everywhere here in our, in our cities. So the range can be can vary, but the bandwidth is actually quite uh, uh, parallel. So we can do Netflix streaming, Spotify. We have very low latency, so it's really useful for some scenarios when we want some latency. I don't know if we were, for instance, using this to track uh, a race. I don't know a deep racer race we have there in the in the hall or whatever race. We will need low, we will need low latency. So. But what the thing with, if we, we have great bandwidth and low latency, the problem is the power. The power consumption is really, really high, and we will need like a big battery to do this. For instance, typical connected vehicle, connected cars solutions, they're using this uh, M2M solution, like 2G, 3G, and well, the battery for a car is a big one, but if you don't manage it properly, you can leave the car up, uh, right there dead, and you will not, you will not won't be able to, to actually get the car running. So that's the problem with this uh, technology, the, the power. Here, at the beginning, we have the shortest range and really low bandwidth. This is the RFID, NFC, NFC all these things you're having now in your, in your wallet with your Apple Pay or Google Pay. They are called contactless. Sometimes there's some contact, actually, so <laughs> it will be contact with, or I don't know. <laughs> the name, but yeah, the thing here is minimum range, very limited data, just my car number or whatever ID. Also this re running stuff with the, with the artists in the, in, the, in, the, in the races are using this technology. The good thing for this is you don't need any battery. The car is just powered by itself with the radio, so that's a good thing, but the use cases here are very limited. Then we have something in the middle right there, it's called it's the Zigbee, Bluetooth, and all these technologies. Bluetooth has quite some traction at the moment for IoT. It's a technology I like really a lot. 
But again, range here is a, lim is a limiting factor. If we are using uh, Bluetooth 5, for instance, now is the technology of use in the Bluetooth, the, like the top uh, specification for Bluetooth. I have tested like ranges uh, about 300 meters or so, which is pretty cool. Power consumption is okay for Bluetooth as well, so it's quite useful. But again, this range could maybe, I don't know, I can maybe track uh, things here in the in the cinema and all in the venue here, but not in a city or a bigger scenario. So that's the limiting factor here. And then we have the our now the technologies we're going to talk here. This is the long range, I mean long range and low bandwidth here. So here is uh, the Sigfox, LoRa, and and narrow band IoT and LTM that they are long range, so we can achieve uh, kilometers of range. Low power, we can achieve uh, several years of battery. And then we have the one problem because these things don't come like uh, cheap. So in order to have this, you, you have to compromise something. And we, we compromise this here is the limited bandwidth. So we wouldn't be able to use this technology to stream a Netflix video or watching YouTube or whatever. We're just going to be able to send some events data I don't know, Mike, like a temperature has gone over a threshold or whatever, triggering an alarm, things like that. So this is what this technology is for. So hopefully now you have all this picture of technologies together and you have an understanding. Sorry if I got too technical, but I think it was necessary. And now Angel is going to ask you a question to, to, okay. to get started. Thank you. <coughs> so we are talking about uh, lower. Uh, okay, lower means uh, long range technology, but Anybody here knows what is uh, LoRa exactly? Okay, few hands on. Two, two people. Yeah, two people only. Okay, uh, LoRa once means uh, long range, uh, and also I want to apply the name of uh, low power consumption, right? But also is uh, a kind of uh, radio frequency technology, right? So as Mario says, uh, we can uh, send an amount of minimal mm, packets or very, very little packets, at least at 150 bytes each time. And depends on this, uh, okay, we cannot do mm, or use that technology for, for streaming video or streaming audio or whatever, but we can use it for, uh, okay, send a little amount of data of mm, remote sensors, right, using this technology. I'm going to talk in the next slide that about this technology of, of radio. And, uh, okay, uh, exactly, LoRa is based on that thing. So, first of them, the range is here, right? It uh, depends on the areas, and maybe in urban areas, maybe you can reach at least uh, uh, one or two kilometers, depends on the places of the gateways and also of the, of the nodes, right? But if you go to a rural environment, uh, maybe you can go more further, maybe, okay, 14 kilometers, sorry, 40 kilometers or more. Normally, a dirt is light of sight. Uh, you can see with your eye, you can put the data within, inside uh, the, the, the gateway, right? Uh, this is one of best, the most important things of this technology. The other one is the low power. The low power, that, that kind of devices, I'm going to explain the three kind of uh, devices, type A, type B, and type C in the next slide, but normally, the low power means that Imagine a node that needs to send a temperature, maybe, and this uh, node wake up, sends the temperature data, and then comes down to sleep for, I don't know, 20 minutes, half, a, half an hour, whatever. So uh, this kind of technology to sleep the, the, the nodes helps too much to, to get low power to use that batteries for, for years, right? Also, uh, we can use, talking about gateways, uh, I'm getting the idea that the gateway is uh, like a, okay, like a um, Wi-Fi router. That is not a Wi-Fi, but because using a technology, LoRa, LoRa, LoRa technology, uh, he can receive uh, a huge amount of data of different uh, thousands of devices. Maybe using a magical number of 65,000, whatever, I don't remember. <laughs> but yeah, more or less, uh, can, he, can, can manage that huge information for many different uh, uh, um, uh, sensors in the same time, not, not in the same time, in different channels, right? But uh, in, the same, in the same gateway, right? So this is an important thing. 
also is uh, based on an open spectrum, on, on, on an open frequency. That frequency depends on the areas. In, uh, in Europe, you are using 868. In the uh, United States, you are using 1915, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, 433, yeah, 433 in, in Asia. Depends on the, on the places. But there are little and narrow bands uh, uh, specifications of frequency that you can use for free. We don't need to pay any, any kind of royalty or any, any, anything like a, a huge uh, uh, operator, right? So this is a very, very good thing also we can use for it. But we use that frequency uh, using maybe not, not uh, okay, you, you know that maybe there are another technologies using the same frequency, so you, are, uh, you need to use it uh, in right? With, without, without the, all for you. And the only thing, or the only question to to, the, that, to say that this thing is not good is also for the bandwidth. Okay, we don't try, we don't, we, we cannot send um, a, a broadcast radio or broadcast uh, um, a video or whatever, but it's using for, in this case, maximum 15 kilobytes per second. You can use, it depends on the, the, the mode that you are transmitting the data, you maybe use more long packets, but at least I think no more than 150 or whatever, no right? Depends on the, yeah. if you use uh, maybe one packet of 150, maybe uh, it's using less time to send that data and maybe it's not getting far away that you're using 15 kilobytes and using more time in the, in the, in the time, right? So depends on the, 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 the size of the packets, go more for it or not. And talking about LoRa one, what we apply this one suffix to this word to LoRa, because LoRa is a radio technology. LoRa one is a, a kind of a protocol stack network environment architecture based on a network layer, right? When uh, uh, the part of the LoRa that is the great, the great one, we have the this different frequencies and the the original ISM band that we can use depend on the place. That this is the LoRa, and then uh, we can select uh, the kind of uh, different type nodes, uh, the network capacity, the battery consumption of this, of this one, and also the application to uh, my uh, data is going to do or is going to mm, to, to to put it on in a in a in a, in a panel or, or whatever, right? So LoRa one is focused to a network based on LoRa radio environment. Okay. So inside LoRa one, uh, some things to do, to say. One of them is there's no association between a node and a gateway in LoRa one. Okay, I have my sensor here, and I got a gateway over there, and my sensor it can talk with that sensor. Sorry, with that gateway and send the data. But if I go to another place that there another gateway using the same uh, LoRa one technology and the same LoRa one network server my data comes to data, uh, that gateway, so it's not associated to the same gateway, okay? Okay, imagine that we have uh, one gateway here in Spain, and you have another gateway uh, in another place, maybe UK. The same, the same uh, node will send data in both gateways, right? Okay, all the network is able to control, duplicate data, security, notifications, whatever. Okay, so n we are no worry about that, and also no handover with roaming. We can move with this, with this node, and uh, actually uh, depends of the uh, in the new nodes also can switch uh, to different uh, frequencies, yeah. the new ones, right? But uh, you can move around the around the globe, and with the new ones now we can select XTX or 1915 or whatever. Okay, uh, talking about nodes, uh, we have three types of nodes: node A, and node B, and node C. Most important thing is the node 8 is more focused on battery efficiency, right? So this is a kind of, of node that wake up, send the data, and go to sleep for the next time. Uh, using LoRa 1 also is useful to send data and also to receive data, but it's more focused to send data. So imagine that we can uh, change the, the time it's time that uh, node need to send the uh, temperature. Imagine that the, the node temperature is sending one hour and I want to change to send at 15 minutes. Okay. In mode A, when the node send the temperature, before go to sleep, 
he gets maybe two seconds listening for something, and this listening for something is maybe something packaged to me. And this space is when that data comes to me and they say, hey, change your mind, and the next one time, try to send the temperature to its 15 uh, uh, minutes mm -hmm. times, right? So this is, the, 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 uh, this is the, 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 the focus of the functionality of that nodes in mode A. In mode B, it's the same, but the listening time is in, 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 in timetables, in, in predefining timetables between the gateways and the node. So start maybe to wake up, not to say nothing, but maybe to wake up to listen to something and then go to sleep, right? And the node C is the worst in the cases of uh, energy efficiency because it's always listened, it's listened to continuously. Imagine a bulb on a two or whatever. Okay, this must be uh, always wake up to know if it's any kind of, of uh, data to, 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 to open the bulb or not. So this may be a classy node, right? I'm talking about a little bit about the network. We have here on that side the end node, and we have pet tracking, water meters, stress containers, vending machines, gas monitoring, temperature, whatever. Those nodes talk with different concentrators or gateways, but maybe can be put in around a, an area or around your country or whatever. Those concentrator gateways send that data, and here it starts a dual uh, K per change encrypted. One of that K per change is to encrypt the communication with network server, and the other K per change is to encrypt the communication with the application server. Okay? So I do dual uh, encryption to, to know to that to that packet, right? Uh, what are the things network? Okay, the things network is an Internet of Things network for all by all. It's like an open network, like an open network for the citizen that you can use that network for our own projects, right? And it's mm, made it for this. So this starts in uh, Amsterdam in the year 2015. I'm going to show you a video for the, for the guys that start the, the, things, the things network. Listen, please, the uh, message. Imagine an Internet of Things data network that's created by the people and free and open for everyone to use. That's our mission at the Things Network. We are a group of people that is building a global, crowdsourced, open, free Internet of Things data network. New technologies allow for things to connect to the Internet without Bluetooth, 3G or Wi-Fi. This technology is called LoRaWAN. It's very battery efficient, so devices can last up to three years. It's long range, it has a reach of around 10 kilometers, and it's low bandwidth, ideal for the Internet of Things. The good thing is that this network can be built at a fraction of the cost of traditional mobile data networks. The bandwidth used by LoRaWAN is open, and the network equipment is low cost. In the old world, building such a network was up to large corporations. We built the network ground up, funded by its users. So with a small group of people, it's possible to provide data connectivity for an entire city. It's our mission to support that globally. The city of Amsterdam was covered in four weeks, and use cases were built on top of that, starting from the first day. We believe the abundance in Internet of Things data connectivity we're providing result in exponential innovation in the Internet of Things. You are the network, let's build this thing together. Thank you, Johannes. <laughs> so uh, everything starts in Amsterdam with that guy and another, another guy with him together. And uh, in a few weeks, uh, they have coverage all the Central Amsterdam with that uh, uh, gateways to start uh, making uh, pre community projects, right? So uh, we are the network. Let's going to build the things together. This is the main message of, of, of this of this of this uh, the things network, right? Um, yeah, and here the vision is the idea to create a decentralized network an independent in Internet of Things network where the people are the owners and the own operator at the same time. So you buy a um, gateway, you put it on your gateway with internet connection, and you are the owner of that gateway, and you are the, prop the proprietor of that gateway, and you uh, 
maintain that gateway, that everything, every time it goes up without uh, interruptions, right? To, to, to serve to the other guys that are the things network to use his own uh, nodes in your gateway or across your gateway. Well, this is uh, the idea, the basic idea. And very important thing here on these three things, one of them that is the data is your data. So if I can send from here my temperature to get the data, strata data to, to, to put it on my database and draw it on Grafana or whatever, and my data is my data. If I don't collect that data, that data loses. The data goes out. Nobody do nothing with my data. And also, the encryption uh, is only for me, only for my applications. So um, I am the own responsible of the, my data. Right? This is a very good thing. Nobody uh, plays with your data. No. If you don't get that data, you lose that data. It doesn't matter that you're using a gateway that you set up yourself or you're using a gateway from the community. Exactly. All, the, all your information is going through the cloud, from the end to the, the thin network community infrastructure, and then you consume it in your application. You, you will not have access to, even though, I, 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 even you, if you own a gateway and you can see the traffic, you, yeah. you won't be able to de-encrypt de it. So. Yeah, because it's encrypted by another guy with another case, right? Also, the network neutrality. Uh, no companies are changing the, the way to, to make or to, to create or to maintain that network, right? And it's because this is open source to open source it to, to base it also in software, open source software to, to uh, get everything open uh, to maintain and to make changes with no, with no privacy, right? And, and to collaborate in together to make this project alive, okay? There was a kick started in 2015, and uh, they can, he can reach at, at, at least 300,000 uh, euros. And with that money, he did start to create a basic TTN net, uh, gateway, a TTN nodes. This is the, the first TTN node that they create, and also the, the, the things in gateway. And also, uh, in an in a, in Arduino format, on an Arduino platform, is also creating with a radio based on LoRaWAN to uh, start to make uh, some, okay, to start uh, learning platforms or whatever to start to work with this, with this, uh, with this, uh, the things network, right? And also with all the community infrastructure for the network servers and whatever. <coughs> and also the global impact, this starts in Amsterdam, but uh, so much communities like our, our community here in Madrid and in another country, in another cities, are starting uh, the Things Network, Sydney, the Things Network, Madrid, France, Paris, uh, whatever, New York, in ar around the world. And this is very good because you can use your own nodes in every world, as, as you are worldwide. close, at, yeah, worldwide, as you are close to uh, the Things Network gateway, your device will work, right? And uh, now we are going to use to talk about some use cases, uh, Mario. Yeah, just to give you a quick view you. about possible use cases that people are building with this technology. For instance, these pretty birds here, they were part of the initial deployment in Amsterdam. So basically what we are doing here is they were measuring the air quality. They were doing an air quality management project. And why, why did they choose Lower One for this? One, because the temperature does not vary very quickly. So you don't need to start to keep measuring this, this, this magnitude all the time. So you, don't need, you don't need latency for this. So this is perfect for, for LoRaWAN. But the lifetime is also key. You won't be able to get up there in the traffic lights or wherever they are placed to change batteries every week. That will be feasible. Also, it's very specific, this is case, so it's only an uplink going up to the platform, sending the temperature. You don't need to change anything to downlink, so this is a perfect scenario for LoRaWAN. Another one, kind of the same, same scenario, just uplinking messages. It was doing in uh, Oxford, the Oxford mm -hmm. area, in the United Kingdom. So you in, you've seen an ultrasound sensor in the river zones. They were measuring, uh, detecting overflow or the rivers when they were uh, uh, having some storms or some raining, and they are we are receiving this data in this within the thin network infrastructure. And they were building this dashboard for people to send alerts and stuff. Here is a use case we are very devoted here in the community. So yeah. our our <laughs> our <laughs> use case here in Spain is the not in Europe but in Spain we normally live in condos and communities. So 
it would be a perfect scenario for deployment, having a gateway for the community and then having the uh, smart community. It's like a mini, m mini smart city here, actually. You can yeah. sense the pool, the lighting, the security and stuff. Again, long battery lifetime and really cost efficient uh, project, like, I don't know, uh, 200 euros for a gateway. Yeah. Then communications are free, as we said, no SIM card, no, no taxes. Smart parking solutions, again, event trigger, important. I have very long ba low bandwidth. I need to send just an event. It's a car over me, there's no car, there's a park place available. Long battery lifetime, same again. Pet finder, here we can also do some stuff, as uh, Angel told you, with Node-C, for instance, we can we can just embed a GPS inside the, the, the sensor and we can, whenever we detect that my dog is apart from me, I can trigger, I can just enable GPS uh, on demand and they can start sending GPS positions so I can locate them. I, I can extend even this, this use case to elderly care, elderly care or whatever. So it's another use case. And basically anything. So uh, as we said here, a public network owned by citizens will be able to deliver high impact and high value use cases. So this is a network built by citizens for citizens. So wherever you can imagine, we are open to you because we are really starving for use cases here. We know about technology, we are missing some use cases. So I invite you guys to come, ask, uh, come to us with your use case. So let's see, let's see what we can build together. Urban agriculture monitoring, mobile gateways, maybe in the city, if we get an agreement with uh, a council, we can get, I don't know, gateways in buses, in waste, waste trucks, whatever, so we can get like dynamic coverage maps in the city, that would be awesome. Also in remote areas and rural spaces, that's the best for Laura One. If I go in the middle of the desert, I don't have any any communication there. I, I don't know, I have a, uh, an oil and gas plant over there. I don't have any communication, maybe a satellite back hole. I can go there, just put my gateway in the middle. I can get 100 kilometers because there's nothing in the desert. And then I can have a satellite, uh, satellite back hole or whatever. So it's, and actually your, your, your own case can be here. So I invite you guys to come to us. We will give you some of our, some of the places you can find us. So yeah, I'm gonna speed things up. We are getting, running out of time. So I want to tell you about the Things Conference uh, 2019. This is happening yearly in Amsterdam. Uh, these guys, the guys you saw in the video, are, are conducting this conference where all people about, uh, are talking about LoRaWAN and you know funny stuff, IoT. This is the current status. They started in 2015, as Angel said, covering the city of Amsterdam in four weeks. Now they have 91,000 members almost 10,000 gateways, and they, are, they have presence in these countries. This is the community network built at the moment, okay? As you, as you may see there, Europe is pretty crowded. In Spain, we are still getting there, but mm. it's, it's, it's quite amazing, I think. And yeah, the, the, I will show you a quick video about the conference and wh what this has become in four years' time. <laughs> Welcome! We need to rethink security. And yeah, we're super, super excited about this product. And so imagine the use cases you can drive with this single piece of hardware. And yeah, a lot of fun as well. It's good to see lots of solutions. Whereas I think in, in prior conferences, there's been lots of technology. And we're super excited that we're launching these gateways around the world. It's even more exciting is that we're gonna do this as an extremely disruptively low price point. And that's why we are going to help you by providing LoRaWAN connectivity over satellite. We're standing on the shoulders of giants. Oh, the Things Conference has been amazing. We've really enjoyed a lot. And very inspiring conversations with a lot of the community. We're really looking forward to next year. And there's one more thing. We're giving away 800 of these gateways to everybody here. So, yeah, you can see now what the, this movement has become. So it's, it's quite amazing what people can do when they get together and they agree to something. 
So here was the content of the last year's conference, the conference that the, this year is happening in January, as you, you may see. So yeah, they released a new stack, open source again, with some cool features of technology. I'm not going to bore you, bore you with that at the moment. I'm going to tell you about uh, wha what, for me, for us, was the more most interesting uh, topics here in the conference. There was this guy appearing on the video, Thomas Telkamp from Lacuna Space, that's a startup doing a satellite deployment for LoRa Communications. It's quite amazing. As Angel said, actually what our tests show that if you can actually see the gateway from here, maybe you, you, won't see, you won't see because of your eyes, but if it's there and it's nothing in the middle, you have yeah. line of sight, you, you, you get communication. Yeah. So this guy is telling us that Normally, our, our IoT applications are being deployed here in the cities. This, where we live, is all this color area. Like, we have 2G, 3G, 4G, Wi-Fi, Sigfos, LoRa, whatever. That's easy, but their, their, their mission is to get coverage in the white space in the map. Also I think they did it on purpose, because everything is quite white. So yeah, <laughs> but okay. yeah it's, that's, a, that's a, their objective. So, how, what, are, what are you doing, they're doing here? They're using low Earth orbit satellites that are this is a big, big hype on this at the moment. They are very cheap to launch, like, I don't know, 50,000 euros, maybe, yeah, maybe a bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, they just put a, a, a gateway there. They just shoot, shoot these satellites to the space, and then you, ha you get coverage. It's amazing. It's like six, 600 kilometers yeah, in this yeah. orbit, yeah, yeah. and you still get coverage. The, you, uh, you may see this uh, typing machine there. It was receiving data from the space and actually mm. doing the, the printing the message. Yeah. Quite impressive. The, uh, for a day, a satellite in these orbits that uh, does two times a cycle in the, on Earth. So that means you can, you may be able to deliver two packets, I mean, two transmissions per day, with only one satellite. That's quite impressive, I, I think. Actually, it's getting really busy this orbit because everyone is now <laughs> launching satellites, and <laughs> forgetting. But I think it's a really interesting use case. So basically, they are doing, they are putting. The, you have here their node, you have the satellite, you get the LoRa wonder. Then they have some relay, relays here in the, in, uh, on Earth, and then they have a platform connected to the thin networks or under another LoRaWAN providers. So this was pretty interesting. Another thing they were doing is geolocation in, in Holland, in the Netherlands. They have uh, this KPN, uh, one of the first uh, telcos worldwide, uh, deploying a national wide uh, LoRaWAN network. They have all of these gateways. And they are using trilateration technologies to, I mean, uh, measuring the time differential of arrival of this for the signal, they are doing this trilateration operation just to determine location for the node without using GPS, which is which has some really huge impact on battery lifetime and, net and node cost. So this is the results. To me, they are really optimistic. Uh, I think in the Netherlands they don't have many buildings as here, so Amsterdam is quite flat, and so they have this percentage of, of success, which is they, they are able to locate 95% of the nodes uh, with a, uh, an accuracy of 100 meters or less, which is quite impressive. Qu quite impressive. Here, this is for, for high-rise uh, building environments. This will be more or less our measures here in Madrid, maybe more. I yeah. think this is very optimistic, but it's a way to go. Just to provide you with a coarse geolocation without GPS, using just LoRaWAN radio. So, yeah, you can get a, 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 an accuracy between uh, uh, 500 meters and 1,500 meters with RSSI levels. You know, the quality of signal strength, the longer, the weakest. And then when you are getting closer, you can use the, if you have many gateways, as they have in the, in the network, you can just compute uh, the time the, the signal takes to reach the gateway and then subtract it, and then they do this trilateration measurement. And then the, th the last one is this guy, Paul McManus. The, his, he started Mest IoT. It's a company there in, in Australia based entirely on the thin networks and the thin industry, that is the business branch of the thin networks. They are working with Australian councils. Basically, the business model is building a POC using uh, open source and the community environment. They are uh, also relying on partners for nodes, and then he's just going crazy and selling stuff in Australia. And if they like it, they are building uh, you know, a, a service with uh, SLAs and stuff over the thing industries. So they are doing really, really amazing things in these councils in Australia. They are promoting STEM skills for, for kids. They are engaging communities, raising awareness level on technology. Same thing we do here as well in, in the TTN Madrid community. They have Pax Counter. Uh, 
tools with for, for, for councils and they have for some agriculture, city, applications, etc. So this is what the world is doing and the community is doing in the wor worldwide with a big growth. And now Angel is going to tell you what we're doing here and also in Spain. And because we are really proud of we, we have achieved in these four years as well. Okay, thanks, Mario. Yeah, in the Things Network here in TTN Network uh, community here in Madrid. Actually, we are uh, approaching, reaching to 140 contributors here in Madrid, and with uh, approximately 38, 40 uh, gateways also here in Madrid and the community here of Madrid. A very, very uh, huge and very, very active uh, community. Uh, well, our main things actually are, okay, one of them is to express the boy to try to talk with this and get all the knowledge to all people to know what is this. Also, trainings, also helping consultants and companies and also uh, doing and helping uh, little deployments to, uh, to people that start to use that uh, network here in, in Madrid on different projects, right? Uh, our community is a reference now here in Spain. We are, thinking is, we are the big one right here in Spain, right? Yes, for sure. Yeah, the, yeah. And, uh, okay. <laughs> you will show the, our ranking worldwide. Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and also, okay, doing uh, work, work, workshops by uh, making notes, also workshops for making uh, gateways. Uh, we've, uh, we've reached uh, actually close into 900 followers on Twitter. And, uh, okay, Mario here talking in Google in Google Campus uh, last year, I remember. Yeah, a few or? months ago. Yeah, two months ago. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't remember. And in the middle, one of the bad thing was the first uh, record in terrestrial Laura one here in Spain. One of uh, our very active guys uh, in Galileo comes to La Bola del Mundo here in Madrid with a with a note, and he reached a gateway that is in the Salamanca city, across across you know, uh, more, more or less near of 140 kilometers directly. Connecting uh, using 20 millivolts. Imagine that you can open your uh, garage door with you with your remote uh, in, in 100 mi in 100 kilometers. It's the same thing, right? It's also amazing. And that guy, uh, uh, he he launched um, an helium uh, balloon to the stratosphere uh, up to 30 kilometers. Yeah. Yeah, 30, 30, 30, yeah. 300,000 kilometers top, and reach the world level, the, the world record level. Uh, reaching um, a, a distance of closing 800 kilometers to uh, from the area from the area from uh, Zaragoza, from Zaragoza, uh, reaching a gateway in Lisbon, in Portugal. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's awesome. Okay, we are actually the fourth contribution uh, 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 city in in uh, uh, in the top in the top ten, right? Um, and we participate in. Some summary events here in the 19, in the in the 2019, we are based in Media Lab Prado here in Madrid, close to Estación uh, Atocha, and we have in Spain, and we meet uh, weekly every every Friday, talking with, of use cases, uh, installations, uh, and whatever, workshops. and technology, whatever, uh, and we can share with this with you. So please, you can welcome everything, everybody to come with us. Uh, also uh, working with companies and preparing hack days, uh, uh, starting with, and in this case, with PyCon, using their nodes and configuring with the Things Network. Uh, also in the first Intel International Forum of Citizenship and Ciencia Ciudadana, a, 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 a workshop of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, doing uh, node sensors, right? Also last September, uh, I have uh, at least Mm, eight to ten paths, okay, mm, the same thing, spraying the system, uh, doing uh, different labs with nodes, with, uh, with gateways, uh, etc. Also helping to present the first national LoRa one operator here in Spain, that is Red Action Network, is a, a, a company based to offer uh, mm, um, uh, LoRa one a network in a, in a, in a, in a in a, yeah, like, Net like the things no, network, yeah. exactly, okay. Mm. Okay, also helping in Fossasat, that is very, very Asian because uh, that guy, Julian, is uh, one of the components to uh, start up a little uh, micro satellite in the next, in five days. Uh, I'm going to, think to, to launch from New Zealand from in New five Zealand. days yeah. to launch this handmade uh, micro satellite to the, okay, to the space to starting to send data in LoRa 
uh, in Laura uh, frequencies, right? We had the pleasure to be with him in a conference. Yes, right. When joining him live to our conference in, uh, in the Media Lab Prado. And th this guy, Julian, is, is amazing. He has, like, he's 17 years old, yeah. I think. Yeah, he's a brilliant man. And it's yeah. amazing to see all this, all this power here in the, in the community awesome. in Spain. So if you want to join with us, uh, please, we, you can follow us on Twitter. Also, we have uh, Slack, to, you can contact with us on, on Slack. Also, we have a Meetup. This is the URL for Meetup. And uh, we are open to everybody to start to make that community more bigger and, and, uh, and from, from everything, from everybody, right? Yes. So yeah. I think uh, we are in time. Uh, yeah, do, you, do you want to? OK, do you have any kind of any questions or whatever? Thank you. Also, thank you for your coming. <laughs> for your patience. Yeah, also for your patience. <laughs> <laughs> no? Yes. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. How do you see the development of the narrowband IoT? Um, like, do you see it like a competitor, like a no? An it's a complementation. Yeah. Good question. It's a complementation because narrowband IoT is is working in another different band. And it's more maybe focused on offer uh, business uh, case uh, case of use, right? Because uh, narrowband IoT is used by big telcos, and you see the frequency of the big telcos. And this is a uh, using okay, another technology that is not narrowband, that is a lower one, and is using another different uh, uh, um, frequency. So I think it's a complementation. It's not a, it's not a competitor. I mean, it's my, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Depending on the use case, yeah. you may use one or the other. You can combine both also. Also depends on your uh, service level agreement, what you're going to achieve. You, you normally, narrow man IoT networks are going to be backed by huge telcos and businesses. So this is more like uh, what we are doing here is a community effort hmm. and, and a community enriching the, the knowledge. Also, these guys from Radexia, they are building this Lero one operator, they are the rivals for the narrowband IoT. I would say I would add also that narrowband IoT deployment is going a bit slow. But actually that's yeah. that's expected. Yeah. That's to be expected because they are building something like profes really professional. Yeah. I think also mobile is growing on demand, right? Yeah. I it's on basic on demand. Yes, yeah. it's on basic on demand, right? More questions? Okay. Yes, please. Distance. Okay. Yeah, as you said, um, LoRa is designed for to work with long range, yeah. um, very low battery needed. Exactly. So, but I guess the gateway is a different thing. You need a power chain. Exactly. And you need a exactly. 3G. So my question is pretty simple. Is there any way to a kind of hardware hardware to repeat the signal to a, to the final gateway? Imagine you are talking about cities. So the power, the electricity is a commodity, a, a yeah. commodity in a city. Yeah. But yeah. thinking in a, rural in a rural environment, is there any way from a LoRa device to send the signal to another, an, another LoRa device yeah. that works like, like a repeater to send the signal to a final white way? Very, very good you question. You are talking like a mesh network. Do it by LoRa, right? Yeah, a, like a that. kind of, right? Yeah, yes, you can do it, but with LoRa, not with LoRa yeah. One. You were just on point in your question using LoRa and not LoRa One. Exactly. This network is LoRa One, and this is this. You couldn't be able to do that with the thin networks. This is LoRa One. If you remember this network graphic we saw over here yeah. with the nodes here and the gateways, there is no communication between nodes. Exactly. That's what you're proposing. But, but you can use LoRa as a physical layer. Yes, of course. And build or as any any pro I think protocol on top. Maybe yeah. doing a repeater. For, for example, this company yeah. we mentioned, the Pycom one, they have a, it's called Pymes, yeah. and they are doing kind of the same you're proposing. As, as using like a, like a network transport, you can use LoRa, only LoRa, to make an, a, a mesh network. I mean, one of them repeat all that traffic to directly a LoRa one, uh, gateway or whatever, you know? Maybe it's... I don't know yeah. if we uh, respond your to your question, right? Yeah, cool. Thank you. Also, mm -hmm. if these guys with the satellites are, are are actually doing their work, you will be able to just use the satellite. <laughs> More questions? No? Any one of you is coming to our weekly meetings? Yeah. In the
Sure. We are now going outside taking a beer <laughs> if you want to discuss with us anything. So thank you for much for coming here.